So it's been a week on action here at Beowulf Training. Action is that kind of first step and the following steps that get you towards your goal. We're trying to help people get too much out of that kind of planning phase, that talking phase, that ideas phase. And in the words of a famous sports brand, just do it. Because you can have the best plan, you can have the best process. If you don't do it, it's not gonna work. One of the best ways to kickstart some action into your fitness routine is to get on the belt training workout of the week, which Francis did on Monday. So 15 squat jumps, five rounds, 10 press ups, 10 squat thrusts, 15 squat jumps out. Got a six minute time cap, are you fast enough? Yeah. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Three minutes, seven seconds. Lucky number seven. Why aren't you more tired? Why? Espresso. <laughs> Didn't you try hard enough? Yeah, I went in. People are saying you could have gone faster. Who? Silence, you hear that? <laughs> then we had JT do a mobility series on knee pain. And some of the great actions that you can follow to help improve that squat mechanic shift the weight off your knee and the stress off your knee and ensure that you're not going to be making that pain any worse and hopefully improve it. Could be something that's really um, simple to rectify and it could just be this kind of knee dominant squat. So what I mean by that is as you start to descend into that squat pattern, you send the knees forward first. Um, and it's something we want to try and avoid. Um, we can just put too much load through, again, those structures in the front of the knee. Um, if we cue that by a hip dominant movement, um, we look to try and maybe keep the knees still. Um, we're going to take some of that stress away and we can load the other kind of big musculature that should be taking the majority of the load in the bottom of the squat. You may need to use something like a box um, just to kind of give yourself a little bit of a barrier. You may find that actually your depth isn't anywhere near where it normally would be and that's fine. It might take a little bit of time if you can get used to that position. Um, so make use of uh, the tempo on the way down, so just make sure it's nice and slow, nice and controlled and if you get to that point where you feel like you know, you're running out of space and you can't quite hit that depth, spend some time in a pause position, get your body used to it um, and just spend time, okay? If you're rushing through it, uh, then you're not going to get the most out of the drill. Coach Mike went on Bell's strength and he's done some paused work which we explored the previous week and how you can build that with your deadlifts. I had a go at this myself as part of my warm-ups and found it really helpful. It was a great way of switching on my deadlift so when I went into my working sets, I felt stronger than I typically do. So it's well worth a try if you haven't already. Okay, so I'm pausing there, just below the knee. For me, that position is really vital. We also want to make sure the weight distribution, where we're balanced, is really important. Keeping a position in the body exactly as it is. The idea of the pause is that we get to just below the knee, and the angle of the torso has remained identical. Because that's what we're trying to achieve in a full deadlift. Often, if you're struggling, your hips can come up first. Sometimes if you're trying to overdo it, your body starts to come up a little bit early. So we're looking just to lock in that position. The legs drive initially, the torso stays rock solid and at the same angle. And as we get above the knee, that's when we start the movement with the hips coming towards the bar, as you will see in the second half of the movement. And that part, when you've got a good solid first half that you could have worked on or stronger with the paused reps, that second half of the lift will become easier always become easier. Me and Scott did our podcast, again, all about action. Where are they going to find that, Scott? The pack. The pack? The Beowulf Training Podcast. Search for it wherever you get your Beowulf. Wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> wherever you get your Beowulf. <laughs> <laughs> See you there, guys. And then I finished the week off just talking about the processes that get you towards your goal. People dwell often on the outcomes, you know, if they're losing fat or they're building muscle, and that's great, but we want to shift some of that focus onto the behaviours that get them there, because that's going to be under your control, and that's what you can directly affect. So it's all rounding up towards Christmas. It's been a um, hell of a year for Bell Training. It's been great working with the team. It's always awesome to be here. The atmosphere is fantastic. Um, things start to quiet down for Christmas. I've got clients going away. It's easing up a little bit. 
Uh, so I'm looking forward to my turkey uh, and all the fun that goes with Christmas uh, starting next week really. So we'll keep the content coming. If you aren't already, be sure to get on the Bell Pack. That's where all this free content is getting shuttled into. And you can get involved with the conversation with the other Bell of coaches and the people that train here at Bell of Training in Purley. It's our online gym floor. Like I say, it's totally free, so what are you doing? Get involved. Next week, I'm imagining things are going to be a little more confusing with us away for Christmas and stuff, but I'm still going to be really pushing to get some content out to you guys and some stuff from the coaches. So. If we don't speak to you before, have a fantastic Christmas and we'll see you as soon as possible.